Hello and welcome to another episode of Behind the Scenes. They call me Stepney tonight. I'm joined by Harry Wells. Harry, how are you? Very well, thank you. Very, very excited to get going. Thank you for having me on. No, thank, like I said, thank you for taking the time to, to, to come and join me. Um, it's hot. So, you know, if you, if you need hot, to cool yeah. down and, and, and fan yourself, free, feel free to. <laughs> I've, I've, I'll use my uh, pucker pad and just every now and again just do that or something. <laughs> it is stupid hot. It is stupid hot. All of a sudden, all of a sudden. You know, it's it's. I like the heat, so you know, I'm I'm never yeah. going to be complaining about it. I'm just surprised that we've got it. To be perfectly mm. honest, that because they would go, oh yeah, there's going to be a heat wave. You sort of go, there's going to be four hours where it's going to be hot, and that's our summer done. And um, yeah, I think they've just gone, boom. Yeah, have yeah. have it all, have it all. <laughs> it's 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 a crazy one because I was speaking to one of my friends and. Um, we, we talked about, you know, the weather and I said, you know what, it was only really lockdown that we had that consistent, nice weather, blue skies, yes. sunshine, yeah, that. pretty much in the February. Mm. I remember that. And that this was good. It. That was good, bad times. But... Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good, bad times. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that, that, yeah it was, now we've got some consistent heat and uh, I'm enjoying it. I, I said, I like the heat and... Um, I know people. I know some people are either a cold person or a hot person, and what people like is what people like, I guess. But yeah, give me the heat any day of the week. Yeah, no, I, I was in Alton Towers over the weekend, and um, the heat caused like this thunderstorm in the evening, and so the next day, pretty much most of the rides were closed. <laughs> so we, <laughs> so, so once they finally open, of course, ev everyone's out queuing. And me and my friends were just stuck in this heat for like an hour. <laughs> it's just queuing for like this 30 second ride. I've never felt more of a mug in my life, but it was, <laughs> it was, <laughs> it was quite an interesting experience. Yeah. You know what? Theme parks, are, theme parks are crazy because Alton Towers, I haven't been to Alton Towers in years, but I yeah. love it. I love, I, love, I love a good theme ride. But as you say, yeah. it's you queue for two hours for a 30 second ride. And then you sort yeah. of go, oh, I can't do that again. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. It is crazy. <laughs> but um, uh, once again, uh, Harry, um, thank you for joining me. Um, this is where we get serious. I put on my serious face. Yes, yeah. Um, why don't you tell people a little bit about who you are and uh, a bit about your journey? Where, where, who is Harry Wells? Who is Harry Wells? Um, I'm going to try and make it sound as interesting as I can. <laughs> um, <laughs> So I am a screenwriter, let's say, who last year sold um, two scripts um, and kind of done a bit of write for hire work as well. And obviously scripts that take a long time, scripts that you sell take a long time to get made if ever. And one thing I've always really wanted to do is make a film. So around Christmas time last year, I decided let's make a film. I didn't have any money. Uh, I didn't have anyone really that wanted to work without getting some pay. Um, I didn't really have hope to be honest, <laughs> but I just thought, why don't I just try it? Um, so I thought, right, I've got an iPhone. I've got some friends. One of my friends is actually an actor. So because we're friends, he'll work for me for free, which is great. Um, and we kind of just, I said, look, I've got this script. He said, I like it. I then got in contact with his other friend. He liked it. And it went from there. We made a film on zero, on zero budget, went through hell. We got out of hell. Then I entered it into my local film festival. It got selected, which shocked me. And then it won an award, which um, I, pretty, I pretty much collapsed. But uh, yeah. <laughs> And now it's in the Brighton Film Festival, which is like an hour down the road from me. So that's 23rd of June. Um, and yeah, and that's where we are currently at. And uh, it's been fun. 
Did you shoot it all on your iPhone? I shot it all on the iPhone, yeah. That is mad crazy how people can do that nowadays. It was, it's, it's a good camera. It is. It's, it's a surprisingly good camera. It's um, very underrated, I feel. Very underrated, the iPhone camera. But um, it's, it's, yeah, it, it, it felt, like I say, it felt fine. Everything looked good, I thought. So, <laughs> so I just rolled with it. Um, like I say, I don't know much about cameras. I can't really tell you anything as long as it looks good on here uh, then then yeah I'll, then i'll just shoot it but um yeah i just shot it with an iphone and we, yeah we went from there there was a lot of uh, trials and tribulations along the way which um which i'll get into but for, i didn't expect this film to get anywhere i was kind of just doing it just to make a film you know i just wanted to make a film i wanted to get that experience i think it was um i think it was quentin tarantino that said yeah, that if you haven't gone to film school, the best film school you can get is to just go out and make a film. Um, so yeah, I, I guess you could say that was my mini film school with an iPhone. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> so maybe when I get a proper camera, that'll be my full film film school. <laughs> um, but yeah, it, it was a great experience and um, I'm going to make more. Um, and yeah, I'm looking forward to Brighton at the end, at the end of the month. I think that will be people who either love it or they'll hate it, but they won't tell me they, they hate it, but they'll, yeah. And we'll go from there. You see now, um, Brighton's I'm, I'm in London, but I've got family in yeah. Brighton. Um, so you never know. I might even try and pop down there. Um, oh, please, for, please for, do. For, what, please day is do. The, what day is the 23rd fall on? That's a Friday. It's at 4 p.m. till 6.30 p.m. If you email me, I'll get you 25% off your ticket. Oof, oof. They're only, like, they're only like a tenner anyway, but... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can get it to you. Every, every little helps. Exactly. Um, now, the iPhone thing... I've got a Samsung, by the way, so, you know, Team Samsung. Um, shooting <laughs> films... Shooting films on your on the phone is not the first I've heard of it, and it's something that's come up quite a lot recently. And more and more people are doing it because, as you said, the uh, the camera quality is is great. What about the sound quality? What do you um, think of sound? Well, the sound sound um, I think has made me lose quite a lot of hair. Um, we had a lot of problems with 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 sound. Um, it, it was so. I borrowed a boom mic off a friend. Um, I don't know why he had this boom mic, but he had a boom mic <laughs> and I borrowed it off of him <laughs> and I borrowed it off of him and we started filming and it was, and I realized that it wasn't working <laughs> about ah. just after. Yeah. So I then went on Amazon and bought, um, these little mics for about seven quid that you just plug into your phone and. I plugged them into my phone and we plugged them into my friend's phone and we kind of went from that and we shot a scene where well, we shot the last scene of the film. Um, and I got home and I went over the footage and it literally sounded like two malfunctioning robots having an argument. <laughs> and this scene was set in the 1940s or the fifties. So it was unrealistic anyway for it to sound like that. Um, and it, yeah, and I, like I say, I, I was pretty close to crying, I think, but um, I didn't cry, but it was, yeah. So then after all that, I binned the mics because that was a waste of seven pounds. And I got the actors together and I used, so we still had the boom mic and I got an iPhone, you know, the iPhone headphones, but the old iPhone headphones where, where we had the cables, not all this fancy stuff with the airpods um i wrapped that around the boom pole and i taped the little mic bit <laughs> and and i just put it above the actors and said can you can you just go through the dialogue again and they and they did which i really respect them for because yeah you know for them to take me seriously after that is um <laughs> much much respect um and they smashed it. They smashed it. I mean, I still watch the film back and there's a few bits that are a little out of sync, but it's going to be after all that, isn't it? So, um, 
yeah that was that was diy filmmaking right right there that was um and then i went back and edited it and and i had to get everything in sync and that and that was yeah and so next i'm going to spend all the budget on the next film on an editor um i think because i don't want to go through that again that was <laughs> that was interesting that was very interesting but i learned so there is so many positives to come out of it <laughs> you learned and um you thought quickly of just going uh, what else could i use headphones yeah. jack boom mic this will work yeah and, and it, it, it did it so it did yeah. and it, it sounded surprisingly good yeah, yeah you know I, I i was expecting something awful but it sounded okay it sounded good and it made me think why didn't i do this from 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 the start why 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 was i trying to be fancy you know why, why was i thinking i was all big and mighty with a boom pole you know uh, <laughs> um yeah yeah it went well as it could good, <clears throat> good, good. um now i'm gonna take you back a little bit further a little bit further um what made you get into it like, what made you want to be a director what made you want to make your own film um, well, I've always loved films growing up. I've always loved stories. I mean, when I was younger, I used to write in these little notebooks, these storyboards. So you get a big pile of them that no one was ever allowed to read or take a look at, but I loved it. I absolutely loved it. I loved films. I watched, I mean, you know, I'm a huge, I, I, I love Christmas films. <laughs> uh, it, I think it's, it, I think it's a wonderful life is the best one ever. I think in my opinion, um, and that's what motivated me to make this film, but I'm, I am going a bit off track here. Um, and it just, yeah, I've just always wanted to do it, but I've never thought for a while, I didn't think I was capable of doing it. Um, and then it kind of got to a point where I was doing these other things in my life. And I wasn't, like I say, I, I used to box a little bit. I wasn't any good. Um, I used to play football a little bit. I was even worse at that. <laughs> um, <laughs> So I kind of just, I started it as a bit of a hobby, really. I just started writing like scripts and I just taught and I just taught myself, actually. I just, I bought a book. I can't remember the name of the book, but it was something on screenwriting. And I just taught myself. I bought a screenwriting software. Um, from there, I just started doing it. I just loved it. I just completely fell in love with it. I was just, I didn't see it as a chore. I didn't see it as something that was, you know, holding me down I, I just really enjoyed it and I wrote a few feature scripts you know the first two or three are always absolutely awful um but now we're on like seven or eight and they're and they're getting okay <laughs> um and then yeah and now that has kind of branched out into wanting to just make films really it's it's just wanting to see something I've written be on the screen and um and to see, you know, written and directed by Harry Wells, that looks pretty cool as well. Um, and it's just, yeah, I just love, I love everything about it. I've, I've just always, I, it, it's just, I finally kind of found out that I can just do it and not, you know, listen to what people might say or think. And, you know, I think, I think, I think that's what, that's what everyone should do. I think they should do what they feel that they should, that, 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 that they should do, you know? So you've written a, I, I'm assuming that you've written at least a Christmas film, right? Yeah, yeah. So this film is a Christmas film. Okay. The, um, and I did write another Christmas film, actually. Um, but that needs a rewrite because it's it needs some work. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> you see, I like, I like a Christmas film. And um, mm. I think that the older I've got, the wider type of films I like. I never used to, I've got two kids. So, you know, uh, over the past 12 years, I've been watching various types of Christmas films as you do. Christmas comes along, they're all on. And um, and then there's like musicals and, you know, I'd never, I won't lie to you, never, they never did it for me for, you know, 30 years. And then all of a sudden <laughs> I was like, oh yeah, you know what, these ain't too bad actually. Um, <laughs> So um, yeah, Christmas films are, are are a staple when it comes to Christmas time. What's your okay? You say you've mentioned it's a wonderful life. Mm. Top three Christmas films. Go for it. Oh, 
So it's a wonderful life at number one. Um, God, when I was growing up, I loved the Polar Express. I loved the Polar Express growing up. That was amazing. Uh, number three. Um, now I'm thinking about it. It's is it? I, I love the original um, Miracle on Thirty Fourth Street. Uh, I love the original one of that. Um, I think it's got. It's, yeah, I think it's got. It's got to be that. I know a lot of people would say Where's Elf, but no, that's not there. Yeah. What that's, about that's, that's, you? That's a good top three. I'm not going to lie to you. I, I'm. I'm. I'm going to be. I'm going to be boring. I'm going to add one that. Um, only because, like I said, somehow musicals are, or yeah, musicals are now a thing that I like. And so, um, in no particular order, Home Alone, um, because Home Alone, the original one, was just was just absolutely awesome. It's still funny today, and I still watch it every year. Um, mm. Elf is great. I'm not going to put it in there, but um, I'm going to put in Bad Santa because um, it's got a, <laughs> it's got Bernie Mac in there, Bernie Mac in there, and. Um, I always forget his name now. Uh, what's the guy that plays Bad Santa? Uh, his name will come back to me. I'll, I'll mention his name at some point during the film, um, during this during this chat. And um, I'm going to say Jingle Jangles. Um, oh, okay. I absolutely. I. It's one of them films where I watched it and I found myself watching it again, as you do, and then watching it again, and then singing all the songs, and then listening to the playlist not 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 my choice that's the kids choice um yeah. just like <laughs> that people know yes yeah I, I, I listen to garage and drum and bass but um nice. yeah that soundtrack was pretty awesome <laughs> nice. um, i don't think i've seen that you know what it's 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 you, you can find it and i'll uh, it's, it's mm. because it's a good christmasy type film if you know what i mean and i think yeah the thing they missed out on in that whole film was not and I suppose it's a good thing that they didn't commercialize it, but they could have commercialized it. And um, there's this robot in there. Um, oh, spoiler alert. <laughs> yeah, massive, <laughs> massive spoiler alert. Massive spoiler alert. There's a robot in there and that they could have made a toy. Because I was thinking, oh, yeah, I'll, I'll buy that for, my, for myself or yeah. uh, and for the kids. You know, they, they'd probably want one as well. Um, but it's probably best that they didn't. But it's, yeah, it's a good little, it's a good little film. And because it's, it's got music and and stuff like that um yeah i'll have to stop now <laughs> no 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 it's good good um <laughs> yeah uh, yeah anyway christmas films christmas films, are, <laughs> christmas films are great so um yeah it'd be it'd be it'd be good to see your your one that's based in the 1940s because as you say it's set around the same sort of time as it's a wonderful life yeah well it's it's I've thrown a bit of time travel in there, which which is kind of wild, wildly ambitious for an iPhone, no no budget film. <laughs> but yeah, I've thrown a bit of time travel in there. It's kind of set. The first bit is kind of set in the 90s. The middle bit set in the 40s, and then the third act is back is back in the uh, back in the 90s. So it's um, yeah, it kind of mixes it up a bit. But it's a Wonderful Life was a huge inspiration. Yeah, massive inspiration for the film. Okay, and um, I'm going to again take you back a little bit, a little bit more. Um, yeah. Your your fascination with films, like most of us, would have started when you were young, as you said. Um, mm -hmm. What would you say your earliest memories were of um, going? You know what? I really like these films. This is this is this one particular film that I really like. Mm -hmm. And how did that influence you to now? Ooh. Um trying to think back here well kind of I loved I actually loved the hangover <laughs> that was <laughs> that really sticks out as a memory for me but that's quite late on I was quite in my teens then but that's one that really kind of sticks out for me the hangover I always thought I'd love to make a film like like that um but we're thinking way back I used to watch oh there was this film I used to watch all the time but I can't remember it now for the life of me I can't, I can't, I can't remember the film for the life of me, but it used to be one of them where kind of you're laying in bed as a kid and you just, that film was every night, you know, <laughs> you put that film on every night. I think it was something like Scooby-Doo or something crazy like that. <laughs> <laughs> but the real one I remember 
which really made me think, oh, I'd love to make a film like that is The Hangover. I think that is just, that is, I, I love, I love that film. And I even love the second one. I don't think the third one's that great, but the, but, but the first two were excellent. And um, yeah, the, the Hangover had a real big kind of impact on me as a, kind of a teenager who enjoyed that kind of humor, that kind of stupidity. Um, I thought it was clever how they kind of implemented actually quite quite a clever story in into that film as well. Um, I think around the same time, the Inbetweeners movie came out as well. Yeah, yeah, I think it was. <laughs> Which, yeah, and that was great. <laughs> so I was quite into comedy. Um, but as I've kind of got older, I've kind of just ventured out into other kind of genres and <laughs> enjoyed all that kind of stuff. I I I, I like a comedy. Um, I'm going, I'm going to disappoint you here. I didn't yeah. like the hangover. You didn't. Oh, I didn't. Um, okay. I didn't. Fair enough. You know what? Fair it's. I think. I think over here in the UK, and um, I'm I'm being obviously very biased here, but I think here in the UK we get that humour and deliver it better. Mm. Um, yeah. So you mentioned the in between us, for example. Yeah. If that was done. In in a, like in an American way, I don't think it would work as well. No, like they've, said, they, they, they've done they've done stuff like that are similar, yeah. and you know you look at um, Malcolm in the Middle and stuff like that, that sort of um, comedy and stuff. But I I just think we deliver it better, and um, I'll use The Office as as, as a good example of that. Um, the Office, we did our one, um, Ricky Gervais did it. And then he sold it to America, and, and I, I love Steve Carell. I think he's an absolutely amazing actor, and um, and the way they did it is obviously different. Um, but you can't act improvisation if you see what I mean. So when yeah. things are just happening and they're just funny, um, and yeah. you just go, yeah, we'll keep that in. We'll keep that in. It makes no sense. We'll just keep it in. It's, it's great. Um, and mm. I think we just do that. I think we're we're more likely to take a few more risks in that in that sort of in that sort of category. So. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I, that's my own personal thing. I, I, I think I tried to explain to somebody the difference between um, comedy I like and let's say um, and, and say something like The Hangover is. Um, you, have you ever heard of the film Wayne's World? I've heard of it. I've not ever seen it. Uh, is, is, is it? I might be wrong here. Is it Mike Myers? It is. It is. It is. Oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah. Good um, yeah. I must have watched that film about five, six times in the cinema. When it came out, <laughs> I, just, I, just, nice. I just thought it was hilarious. And being being a young boy as well, um, it, it just appealed to every single aspect of of what made it funny. And it, you know, they took the Mickey out of themselves. You know, even with advertising in there and stuff like that. Yeah, and it was yeah. just it was just it was just funny. I think for me that when I watched The Hangover, I thought they were acting it well to acting it well to be funny. But it wasn't as funny as what it could possibly have been, if you see what I mean. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Of course. Like, um, like you say, they they tried to do the in between us in America, didn't they? Yeah. From didn't. from what I remember, and it didn't go down well. Didn't go down no. well. Their no. version of it. So yeah, it is two completely different kind of styles of humour. Mm. Yeah, we we get we get ours. Have you have you done any comedy comedy writing yourself or? Yeah, yeah, I've done one. I, I wrote one script called Student Night, which um, was kind of about these uh, uni uni freshers on like their first night out. And one of them is quite an introvert. And they get wrapped up with this kind of drug dealing gang. And they end up actually being on the run for their first night out, their first uni night out. And they spend their whole night out on the run. <laughs> and, they, and they end up in all these kind of weird places. And uh that's the script I really enjoyed, actually. Yeah, that, 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 that was a fun script. It's not been sold yet, but who knows? <laughs> who knows? Great. If anybody, I mean, I'd watch it. So, you know, if anybody's watching and that can pick up a script, contact Harry yeah. Wells. Yeah, um, read it. Read it. Yeah, read it. Um, I'm available for acting work. I'm not good, but, you know, I'm yeah. still available. Yeah. Let's just go put it out there. Let's go put it out there. <laughs> <laughs> Do it. Um, so, Sorry, when I saw your name, is the first yeah. thing that came to my head was um, the Flash, and um, 
I, I watched the series, The Flash, um, that's been out recently over the past mm. like, I don't know, five years, ten years, whatever it was. And um, mm. Harry Wells always, always was always the uh, started off to be the, the nemesis of of the Flash. So I saw your name. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> oh no way! I didn't know. I had no yeah. idea about that. Yeah. Oh, blimey! Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that. <laughs> Uh, do, oh, do, cool. any, any, are you interested in the in the in the superhero Marvel the DC do you know world? What? Of... I've I've tried to be over the years. My friends always kind of used to say, "Oh, do you want to come and see the new Avengers film?" And um, I did. I went to see one of them. I can't remember which one it was. Um, I think it was the one before Endgame. Um. Infinity War? No. That's no, it. No. Yeah, that's it. That's that's the one. It was like three hours long, and and I, it's just not my thing. I I yeah you know I went because I just wanted a night out with my mates, but <laughs> but when you're two and a half hours into a film that you don't really know what's going on, <laughs> that <laughs> night out suddenly doesn't feel worth it. <laughs> um, but I but I but I respect it as a franchise. I think yeah you know i think it's the it's the impact it has is phenomenal you know it's you see it ev everywhere it's 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 a real it's it's a massive box office pull as well um so so i definitely respect it as as a as a as a franchise but i no i've not i'm not keen on them now <laughs> what kind of film would you go and watch then if you were going to the cinema um i love a comedy I love a comedy. I love, um, I went to see Babylon at the start of the year, uh, Damien Chazelle, who's actually my favorite director. Um, and that was a phenomenal film. It, it didn't get the best, it, it didn't get the best write ups, but I think it'll be one of them films in like five or 10 years where people will turn around and say, yeah, that is a fantastic film. Um, I think that happened with the Shawshank Redemption. I'm definitely not comparing them two films, by the way, but uh, <laughs> just just to uh, clarify. But um, uh, yeah, I'm thinking about i thinking about five to ten years. I think that film will will be seen as a great film. Just at the moment, it's not seen as that. But I really really enjoyed it. Um, and not long after that, I saw The Fablemans, uh, Steven Spielberg. It, it's basically Steven Spielberg telling how he kind of got into films kind of his kind of life not not life not life story but his kind of early teens kind of story and that's fantastic um yeah I, yeah i love films like that i know coming out next month it's um oppenheimer and barbie are out on the same day aren't they yeah yeah um which one are you going it, to see um I'll, I'll see Barbie first because I've got a daughter and that she'll probably okay. like that. We both share the same humour, so um, yeah. she'll enjoy it. And I'll, I'll probably enjoy it too. But um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> in that order, that Barbie. Does look fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That does look fun. Barbie does look fun. <laughs> um, yeah. Oppenheimer looks incredible as well. Yeah, um, yeah it does. Yeah, that looks like it's going to be something special I think that, that that looks really really good but yeah I kind of just see you know um yeah whatever's kind of if I watch a trailer and I like and I kind of like the look of it I'll yeah I'll, I'll go to the I'll go I, I love the whole experience at the at the cinema I I, I know they say it's kind of died dying out a bit but I think it's great I I, it's... I don't think it, it should ever die out no, I, I, I'm I'm a hundred percent agreeing with that. I mean, there is nothing better. I'm not going to lie to you, than seeing this humongous screen with great mm. sound, and yes, yeah. watching something and just going, okay, wow. And yeah, so, unlike like if we compare the, like the, the two different movie types, like a sci-fi film looks great because it's visually it's visually um, fantastic looking. On a screen, um, but then if you compare it to something like Shawshank, if you when you're seeing that is, mm. um, it feels smaller. I don't I don't know how, mm. if that makes sense, but it just feels you smaller that, that you're you're going through this person's journey and 
there's not much happening visually. There's, there's, there's obviously stuff happening and stuff like that, but there's yeah. not much happening. But the story just, 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 I don't know. I can't put it into words. The score, the, the story just gets you, and you're you're in there, and you're just following it. And it's yeah, it's cinema. People need to keep on going to the cinema. It's it's it's. There's nothing like it as an experience Definitely. to to go and watch something. Definitely, I, I couldn't should, agree more. I think there should be. I think there should be like more, more. Don't say more opportunities to go and watch stuff, but I think there should be. Because lots of cinemas do, they sometimes show like the old films, like you know, yes, they go back and watch and stuff like that. And they need to yeah. constantly do that because there are certain films that some people, as you say, would have missed, um, mm. first time around, or you know, might not have got good reviews, um, but then have become a cult classic, and yeah, uh, definitely. definitely worth watching, yeah, yeah. And just, yeah, it's like I think watching from home isn't anywhere near, doesn't anywhere match that experience at all um you know there's so many distractions at home you know with your phone and whatever else is going on um in you, you know in the uh, cinema you can just turn your phone off and you can just be fully immersed in kind of what's going on on the screen in front of you 100 percent. um so what has life been like for you behind the scenes um you know you're you're a writer and you've shot your own film on an iphone what was life like for you behind the scenes when you were when you've been a writing and, and then b shooting your film so uh, in in that aspect do you mean in terms of what in terms of like what's going on yeah i mean to the side of is, that? so writing i guess is, is probably a, a lonely experience but do you find yes, it as a lonely yeah. experience and uh, you know as, as shooting it on an iphone and you know doing your own film being a director i guess um yeah. how have you found that experience is it has it been uh again is it a lonely experience it, obviously you had friends so you, you guys would have bounced off each other yeah. and we had that sort of uh, that fun and, and camaraderie and everything else but how 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 is it and and obviously editing as well i can you can stick that on your on your cv and say yeah you're an editor as well but how 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 has that spirit been and what's it been like for you so writing i find thing is i'm quite i love i am an escapist i i love just disappearing from the world for kind of a little bit and just going into my own kind of i think well i think we kind of all are escapists that, you know the people that love films and you know reading books we love just kind of getting out of the real world and all its boring stuff for for, for a bit and so writing for me is that's just to escape for a few hours a day and just really get lost in my own kind of world i love i really i really do love that you know i'll put some music on and, and i'll just completely just zone out <laughs> um so that's so that's great that's i love yeah i, I love uh, just you know and just kind of being being away from the phone for a bit is great as well um in terms of directing wise that's a completely different ball game um that's that that was hard <laughs> um i didn't really know i kind of done this little my girlfriend got me this for christmas she got me a edgar wright directing course thing <laughs> uh bless her and so I kind of done that before making my film. Um, and that was great because I love Edgar, right? I love his films. Um, I think Last Night in Soho is one of the best films I've ever seen. Um, so I kind of learned a little bit from that, like doing shot lists and storyboards and uh, and how to do this, how to ha how to do that. But obviously he, he was telling it from a good camera point of view with a crew behind you, which I didn't have any of that um but yeah that was that's a lot of just kind of you know you're messaging loads well i, I say loads of people i was messaging about three or four people con constantly you know saying right are you available on this day uh have you got this bit of kit have you got that bit of kit uh have you read this line um can we get this outfit from somewhere can we it's just constantly the mind's constantly going right it's kind of like this little checklist in your mind saying right i've got to do this i've got to do this but in a way i kind of like that as well because i like kind of being kept busy um 
so that was yeah that 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 was fun um you know i'm sure i was driving them mad by the end of it all but <laughs> um <laughs> Um, but they were great. They were uh, Luke Adams, Neil Selman, uh, Liam uh, Rowley. They were fantastic. They were such such good help. Like I say, I wasn't paying them, and they were just brilliant. Um, and yeah, the editing side of things, <laughs> that was um, yeah, that was interesting. I, I didn't <laughs> enjoy that. Yeah, I didn't enjoy that at all. Um, but I think I would have enjoyed it a lot more if the sound was fine. Yeah. If we if we had good sound, I think I would have enjoyed the editing process a hell of a lot more. But because of sound and I had to, yeah, you know, match it all up and make sure it was all in sync and that that was a real ball lake. That was <laughs> that drove me insane because there were some bits where I just couldn't get it in sync no matter how hard I tried. So I just had to cut that bit of dialogue and that was. You know, and some of the dialogue was good as well, which was quite annoying. But for the better of the film, I just had to do. I just had to do that. And um, but it was a learning process. So I come out of it having learned a lot. I mean, I come out of it not wanting to ever do it again. So you can say <laughs> I learned to not ever want to do it again. But, <laughs> always learning. but um, always learning. yeah, but again, it was yeah that. But it was just fun to just kind of learn on. The job so so to speak just kind of get to grips and but yeah i i definitely i definitely have a newfound respect for uh editors i think they yeah that, that is not an easy job so respect to i them. guess uh, i guess as a one as a one man show you know writing directing and you know and doing the editing and you know the, the call times and all that sort of stuff mm. and making sure going, as you said going through your checklist as you were um yeah. I suppose you get a different experience of of many different roles, and um, it, I suppose, as you said, it gives you a different appreciation for what what different people do in that in those in their specialist fields, I guess. Oh, massively, yeah, 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 massively. Like I like I respect it all so so much, um, and even like the sound thing as well. There was some point where I had to hold the camera and the boom mic with the headphones wrapped around it. <laughs> <laughs> and just try and get yeah you know because we'd already shot the scene so i was trying to get the actor to kind of re relive the scene just so i can kind of get them to really kind of it, it, uh, immerse themselves within the role um and yeah and i learned a lot from that as well um yeah the whole film was just one big learning curve and for it to you know to not only have been in the the uh the Hastings Film Festival got to have won an award as well. It was really, yeah, it was really kind of great. <laughs> um, yeah, roll on, roll on Brighton. Yeah, well, again, congratulations with the first award. I'm, 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 I'm Brighton, if you're watching this, uh, vote for Harry's film. Harry, what's the film called? <laughs> uh, Clockwork. 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 So, for the, yeah. can we can we view it anywhere yet? Or is it we have to wait till at after the film moment, festival? At the moment, in fact, if you're living. In Brighton, There's, they have their own TV channel called Latest TV, um, which I did not know. But apparently, it's throughout the fest, the week of the festival, it's playing on that TV channel. I okay. yeah, I, I I don't know the schedule or, or, or anything because I don't live in Brighton. Um, but yeah, apparently, yeah, that's it, it's it's playing. Apparently, they've got channels elsewhere as well. But I like I didn't. Um, asked too many questions just the second they said oh we're, we're playing it on tv i said yeah yeah cool <laughs> and uh carried on um so yeah you can if if you live in brighton and you have latest tv um it will be on at some point over the weeks starting whenever the week 23rd of june is <laughs> um, things like the 19th or something like that yeah 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 to be around that so so yeah, you, you know can see it there, or if not, come 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 to the festival. <laughs> to the festival. You know what? It's okay. it's it's funny because I, I I usually ask this question a bit later, but I'll, I'll get it in now. And um, just while I find the actual question that I'm looking for, um, it's an interesting one that because I as a Londoner, I'm not going to lie to you, I do forget that we've got uh, regional channels. 
that mm. you know just that some, something for your particular area that just shows you know locally types of stuff as well as like you know yeah. some old old programs totally forgot about that yeah i had so no I idea yeah that. i had no idea when they sent the, e the email through i was kind of baffled i thought blimey i didn't know that brighton had its own tv channel but it's pretty cool yeah it's <laughs> like i said i i didn't even think about it to be perfectly honest and now you've mentioned it, i've gone oh yeah we used to have i'm sure they still got it but london live oh really so yeah and uh -huh. it's they usually show things like uh london's burning and desmond's and stuff like that like stuff that you knows all old stuff that nobody's really showing on the on the main commercial channels because it's all uh love island and uh other reality type <laughs> tv shows that, that nobody should be watching um <laughs> You're not a fan. No, you know what? I, I, I've not given it. I've not given it the time of day to be perfectly. So I, I, I shouldn't judge it. I shouldn't judge it. But there's always a but. Um, yeah, it's not reality TV. Is not my kind of TV. Um, no. I'd rather I'd rather watch uh, something that is uh, somebody's put their heart and soul into. If you see what I yeah, mean. Yeah, so, definitely, um, definitely. Yeah. So the, the the question that I was going to ask anyway um, is. Do you think there should be like a, I don't know, uh, a small screen TV channel, so uh, for independents um, to showcase their their films, their projects, whether it be a film, a TV series, or you know even even like local theatre, for example, um, mm. should there be a, a small screen TV channel? Uh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I think that would be fantastic for the kind of in, indie film industry as a whole. Um, but in a way, we are kind of really lucky to kind of be in a generation where you can post something on YouTube. Is there Vimeo? Is that one? The Vimeo yep. I heard about? Um, so there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of kind of opportunity out there. But I do think a small screen channel would just boost that even more. Um, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think the more opportunities that kind of independent filmmakers get to be shown the better, because there's so many ta talented people out there that just aren't getting the recognition. Um, so I think any kind of op op opportunity they can get, absolutely. They should be, they should be given that platform. Definitely. Yeah, see, my, my, like I said, that, and I've, I, I bring this up quite a lot because um, it's it's an idea I've had for the longest of times. Um, mm -hmm. But my 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 thinking behind it is, if there's a dedicated channel um, where people can go, like I said, you, yours is going to be in Brighton, so it's in Brighton and it's locally, which is good mm -hmm. for those that are local and uh, will go down to the Brighton Film Festival and stuff like that. But for those mm -hmm. of us that are not from Brighton, um, mm -hmm. that will go. Oh, yeah, you know what? I'd like to give that film a. Of viewing and yes people are sharing it then the you know things like youtube and as you said vimeo and, and you know even things like TikTok and stuff like that and all, yeah. all forms of social media people are sharing it but it that's highly reliant on your on your current audience and and yeah, and your you know and and how you how, how you're able to market and distribute it and stuff like that um so my thinking was if there's a, a dedicated channel for it, people will hopefully flock towards that one channel if you see what i mean i say flock, yeah, but course, people yeah. will check out stuff and um that also means uh, you know uh directors not directors but people that purchase scripts um and say you know what i like that could you make it into a feature film for example you go yeah i've, I've had it as a feature film but you know I've, I've done it as a short but i've had the idea for a mm. feature film or, or, mm. or a tv series and then um then that will lead into something like a pilot week and we don't have that really over here but the americans do um and yeah that was always my thinking behind it so it's a great yeah. that's that that is a great idea i think yeah i think that you should uh, uh pitch that some somewhere i think that's a great idea I should then as you say, hey, <laughs> this yeah. is my idea. Yeah, it's a good idea. It's a great idea. Yeah. I said, it's, the thing is, like I said, there's so much talent, and people like yourself um, and the people that you recruited for your film, um, mm. they've done it A, for um, the love of the art, um, yeah. B, yeah. because yeah. it's something that they want to do, and it's, it's, it's their passion. It's something that they want to say, this is what I've done. Um, and um, 
not that you've done it for awards or anything like that. It's just like, as you said, you wanted to do it to do your own film. So you have to, uh, yeah. something that I've done. That's an achievement. Um, but it would be good to also get that sort of uh, wider audience recognition to know that people go, you know what? Um, even even if it's only seven people that saw it, for example, mm. seven random people from where, all over wherever saw it, you can go, yeah, this is that you get feedback on that, and people go, yeah, I actually enjoyed. Um, what you've done and um, I look forward to seeing more of more of your work and you know it's 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 that sort of recognition that I think people people cherish most yeah definitely definitely I could not agree more couldn't agree more um what are you currently working on so I do have another short script uh written that I would like to shoot but it would require quite a budget um, <laughs> uh, it, it's not one that I think could I could shoot on an iPhone um, so that's kind of in the balance at the moment I'm kind of figuring out what I can do about it in regards to getting a budget because um, the thing is investors are going to be they're not really because they're not going to get any return on on, on a short film um, so they would be investing purely for the love of film. Um, so it would have to be something they're very kind of, it would have to be a script that they'd be very passionate about. Um, but then there is this other idea I've got, which wouldn't cost anywhere near as much, which could potentially be an iPhone shoot again, if needs be. Um, so it's kind of weighing up between both of them really. Um, then I've got some feature scripts, feature script ideas, which I've got all planned out, which I actually need to just sit down and write because I've been hold holding that off for way too long. Um, yeah, so there's a lot of different kind of avenues to go down. I've got a actor friend who wants to kind of collaborate with me on kind of a, pro a project. Um, so that should be good. Um, so th there's kind of all kind of different stuff going on right now, but the aim is really to make another short film before the year's out and write another feature script, preferably like a low budget kind of feature script, because then it will get more eyes on it. Um, I'm kind of just carry on from there, kind of keep building momentum with uh, clockwork. Um, yeah, and kind of just just basically keep 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 going I say I love kind of doing it so it's got to keep doing doing what I'm doing I guess <laughs> um and just see kind of see where it goes yeah you know, that's it <laughs> yeah you know what just 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 thinking about it I mean if you've got a script that requires I'll, I'll let you know afterwards I think that might be able to help hopefully help put you in the right sort of direction that might might be useful i'm not sure i'll talk, oh, talk about oh, it afterwards cool. um but tab oh, i'll give you. them a quick mention because um they're, they're bristol based and uh tab have uh, a a good network of people that might be able to hopefully help you but i'll, I'll put you in in, awesome. in contact awesome. with them Thank you um so you talk about funding how do you how do you go about getting funding because you talk about investors and stuff like that. Is there, is there like, GoFundMe and stuff like that? Is that, is that how you go about it? Yeah, there's um, Indiegogo, I think is one of them, and crowdfunding. It's not something I've ever actually looked into. It's just, that's just from, I, I've asked people for advice on how they kind of, um, so I've asked other kind of short directors who I've watched their films and it's been, it looks incredible. And I've kind of dropped them a message and said, oh, how did you, you know get the funding for this and they either say they crowdfunded or they say they they raise the money themselves um so it's kind of i can raise the money myself but i'm quite impatient <laughs> i kind of like i kind of just like to get to kind of get going um but there is kind of the investor side but then again it's just you've got to find someone who's kind of passionate about film yeah you know because they're not going to get a return i mean they could get a return because they'll have a executive producer credit 
So then maybe later on in plan of they can say, look, I was this executive producer on uh, Harry Wells's film, and now Harry Wells is in uh, LA, <laughs> you know, <laughs> living it up. But <laughs> um, but it's yeah, it's it's tough to get funding for a short film. Yeah, very very tough. Like I say, Clockwork was there wasn't any funding. Um, it was just it was just kind of whatever I had, I used basically. Um, um, you talked, you've talked a little bit about your setbacks, um, uh, with, with clockwork and filming it and stuff like that. How do you deal with yeah. setbacks? Cause it's, to me, it seems like you've got a positive attitude and you'll just go, right, this doesn't work. I'll do this. But in general, how do you deal with setbacks and, and, and... yeah. So filmmaking as a whole, one of the main things I learned from it, it is, it is just problem solving. <laughs> That's, that's what it really strikes me as you're just solving problem after problem after problem. Um, but if you really care, then, you know, you don't care about all these problems, all, 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 all these problems. You care about getting the film that you want. So to me, it was always just trying to find an alternative way of doing things. So it was kind of like, so for example, we tried to use a boom mic, didn't work. We tried to use uh, these uh, eBay slash Amazon mics, they didn't work. So what do I have sitting in a cardboard box? I have these head these uh, headphones from about eight eight years ago. <laughs> let's just let's just com let's compromise. Um, so it's kind of like that. You kind of just and he and like he, even on the day, let's say I don't know the, the actors they're struggling with a certain part a part of the script. You kind of have to. Re, you, you kind of just rework the script a bit to suit them on the day so then it will make their life easier um it's kind of yeah i i i, I just see i kind of like having problems in a way i kind of like that challenge um and i think like i say with with any film whether it be you know the iphone completely low budget to you know the mar the marvel movies i think they, they all have massive problems and it's just it's just about how 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 you kind of deal with them really but i but i like to think that i kind of comp, comp, compromise and kind of try and go down other kind of avenues to get something to work so so yeah okay okay and what do you think the uh the industry needs to uh, what do you think the industry needs to improve so what like, in, in your in, in your in your experience, um, whether it be uh, somebody that's been watching films and TV from the outside, um, to now being yeah, inside yeah. it, what what do you think the, the industry needs to improve? It's a tough one because I kind of thing is so being a screen uh, screenwriter, it's 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 really hard to get anyone to read a script. Um, every company site you go on they all say the same thing we only accept a script if you have an agent um i don't have an agent and then you go to an agency and the agency will say we'll only look at your script if we get a recommendation from a producer who's got a good track record and then and then and then you think well how the hell am i going to get a script read <laughs> um so to get my first script sold, it was just a crazy kind of coincidence on how kind of things worked out. I think I was kind of in the right place at the right time. Um, but I think, that it, but in a way, I kind of understand why they don't read all the scripts because a lot of scripts, they're just not good. And that's, it might sound harsh, but it's kind of true. Um, yeah, 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 you know, so they don't want to waste their time being flooded with script after script from someone who's not you know there's nothing out there to say that they're that they're worth their time which which again sounds harsh but that is kind of the industry so for me to say that needs to be improved i guess is wouldn't wouldn't really be fair um what needs to be improved um not sure. I know there's a big writers. It's a really, it's a really good question. Um, I know there's a writers' strike right now. 
but I'm not part of any WGA thing, so for me to comment on that would be completely point pointless. <laughs> um, no, but I think there needs to, there does to get. It's it's hard. That's a really hard. That's a really hard uh, question because <laughs> I would say screenwriters need to be given an opportunity to get their scripts read more by by producers. But I see it from the producer stars standpoint as well, where they shouldn't have to read someone if they haven't got a rep, like a uh, uh, representation. Um, so it's it's a tough it is it is it is a tough one because I see it from the writer's point of view. But I also see it from the producer's point 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 of view. So it's um, yeah, I guess that would be it. But then again, that's me being a selfish writer. <laughs> um, be selfish. It's, it's, yeah, it's yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I guess yeah. Just read, just read my script. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, read Harry Wells' script, everyone. Yeah, 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 just read them. Um, yeah, I guess that would be it. But yeah, like I say, I see it from the producer's point of view. So I kind of get their kind of angle of things as well. Um, what, what about you? You know what is, um, yeah, I, I, I'm I'm moving through the whole script thing. Um, mm. The one thing that I've, I've learned um, in my time in the industry, um, it's not always about um, your talent. It's more about who you know. So everybody said yes. it, networking is key. Networking is key. Yes. And that's, you know, that's, that's not just in this industry. That's, that's every industry. Um, and, but at some point, um, and, and like, as you said earlier, there's now um, a shift because people um, with large followings and um, being able to put out things by themselves to, you know, a wide enough audience and stuff like that are, are, ch are changing that narrative. Um, mm -hmm. But it shouldn't always be, oh, um, I'm such and such, and I've been in all these movies, and I've got this script. Do something with it, and yeah. they'll do something with it, if you see what I mean. Mm. Um, there's yeah. a lot of talent that, that gets missed. And um, oh, of course, yeah. I think that, I think that, like I said, I think that then falls, goes back to um, uh, a small screen channel, and then, uh, and then having a pilot week. Um, for those sort of things, like I said, I know places like BBC Three used to um, do a lot of stuff with people. Um, Channel Four as well, um, and uh, you know some of the others do like bits and stuff like that. Lots of radio stuff is also good, um, mm. but getting getting your foot in that door. Most of those people have already have connections, so although it might look like yeah. oh, this is a brand new. <laughs> You've never really heard of these people, and uh, blah, blah blah. Yeah, they've got connections. Usually, they've got connections, and and you know, it's not it's not just as straightforward as, as this is brand new, and this is like this is. It's usually because they've got connections, and those connections have, have put them in touch with the right people. So, yeah, I, I I'm with you on that one. I think there needs to be um, a better way, a better way of of. Yeah. Like, it's it's difficult. It's a difficult one. You know, as you said, look, it is. Yeah. There's for every good, for every good script, there's probably a dozen bad scripts. So you know, it's always yeah, exactly, work. and yeah, and like I said about kind of the the writers' guild strike, like I, about like writers' pay and stuff, and like I said, I'm not part of the uh, WGA, but I completely stand with what they're kind of fight, fighting for. You know, it's the writers are. You know, not like I say, I'm not in their position, so I can't. But from what I've read and from what I've learned, yeah, you know, they, they, they should be striking. Um, I think, I think that's yeah. kind of something that need that needs to be improved. Think, you know, thinking about it a bit more. Um, yeah, I think stuff like that, like writers pay, and you know, I think yeah, they're. I think that's something that needs to be dealt with um, yeah. definitely as well. 100% agree. Um, mm. There is, there's always, there's always people that will go, oh, they should just be happy and, and this, then and the other thing you go, mm. you do realize that the actor that's reading these lines wouldn't be an actor reading these lines if it wasn't the person that had written those lines for the actor to read. And exactly. 
exactly. people yeah. people can it's easy to forget and and, and mm. not know about it and just go oh, i don't know why they're striking for and you go um good writers good writers mm. make a good production um if you've exactly. got crap writers exactly. you, can have, you can have the best actors in the world and it will still be rubbish and exactly. um yeah. You, what they are asking for is just to be paid properly and you know better conditions and stuff exactly. like that and mm. with the amount of I said you look at these hollywood films and blockbuster tv shows that you know mm. actors are getting a, a million pound per episode and stuff like that um there's money that can that, that can go to the people that are writing these fantastic stories so um i yeah, i'm in exactly. total solidarity yeah, exactly. you know I've got yeah that. same here 100%. um same here. They so are yeah that's yeah. striking right reasons yeah, and to give, there was a TV show years ago called Heroes, and mm. um, I, I always bring people back to this to this, po to this moment because um, there was a writer strike when this show happened um, when the show was going on. So the first season is absolutely fantastic; it's brilliant. If you get a chance, do go and watch it. Um, it's yeah. absolutely brilliant. But then there was a writer strike, and the show went from yeah. from here to there and yeah no, nobody yeah. could quite like people around me uh, at the time ago i can't i can't quite get it and you just go it's a writer's strike so he's not going to say writers in so the storylines and the, the quality of the storylines from from going here just dropped dramatically and you just went oh and then you know not long after it got canned because uh, but then people lost interest in it and mm, you know it. it was if you i said if you just if even if you just watch that first season alone um I, 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 it's not really your sort of thing, I don't, I guess, but um, it's it's worth it. Like I said, it's it's, it's definitely mm. worth it. Um, yeah, of course. But yeah, you're worth your weight in gold. So you know, <laughs> keep on writing. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> um, mm. What what would you say is um, what would you say if if you were to? Um, where do you see yourself hopefully in the next two three four years what, what's what's the goals what's the aim Ooh, i i think i would love to have a feature film written and directed by myself um kind of out kind of across the kind of in uh independent kind of scene film scene um I'd like to have sold a few more scripts. Um, yeah, the aim for yeah the next two or three years is to have a feature film with my name on the front. Um, that's that's where I see it kind of going. Um, as long as I keep doing what I'm doing, it will definitely happen. Um, Good. It's just yeah, it's just kind of a matter of time. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm just going to make a few more shorts. I'm going to write a few more scripts. And then one day I want to, yeah, a feature film, a feature film kind of out there, maybe going along like the festival circuit, like the rain, the rain dance, um, maybe can. I really, really would love, would love to go to can. <laughs> uh, um, but no, yeah, that's, that's where I see, that's where I see it going. Yeah, that's 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 what in in an ideal world, yeah, a feature film written and directed by me. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's the uh, over ambitious goal. But oh well. <laughs> you know what? It's um, see what I can see I, I can see a Harry Wells feature film. I'm not going to lie. The name you've got a good name. You've got, you've got a name that sells. <laughs> yeah, it's the HG Wells. The HG yeah. Wells. He was. Yeah. Um, yeah, he 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 was great. So, so to carry um, that yeah, on. yeah, just 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 blag it and just say yeah, I'm his I'm his uh, I'm his grandson or something like that. You know, just yeah, just blag, <laughs> blag, blag blag the story. Yeah, he's fourth removed aunt's cousin. Definitely, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I will um, I'll put him on my um, what's the word? Uh, ancestry tree. <laughs> yeah, yeah screenshot it and post it. <laughs> that'd be your way in you know that'd, that'd be your way in trust me literally yeah, yeah. Um, literally and he couldn't prove it no uh, 
yeah. yeah I just go back. I just go back and ask him. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Um, what advice would you give yourself, um, your younger self, if you could go back in time? Oh, start, start earlier. Start, just start doing it earlier. You know, um, I'm 26 now and I started three years ago, serious, seriously, like started seriously three years ago, maybe four. Um, I just and I just wish I could go back to being 18, 19 and saying to myself, look, do it now. <laughs> you know, do it try try starting to make films now. Uh try writing scripts now. Don't think that you're gonna be some uh I don't know, some businessman in the city or you're gonna be whatever. Just focus on doing what you love, you know, don't don't kind of follow what you've been told to do you know do what you want to do um because for years i kind of just was thinking doing what i was kind of told i should i should do um you know along with boxing as well i used i like i said earlier i used to do a bit of that but again i wasn't really that good uh, but <laughs> yeah i just wish i'd started earlier i i really wish i'd started at about 18 19 and just learned the craft a bit earlier but it's never too late so you know um yeah just start a bit younger that's that's what i wish i'd said but i wish someone had told me you know, <laughs> you know what it's it's it's, it, it's an interesting one um most people most people that i've spoken to have um have pretty much said um not that i've not that it was they started younger but it's that it's that early support that earlier <coughs> That earlier sort of support network of somebody going, oh yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, you can go and do this, or you know, oh, you, you know, you're good at that. Is um, yeah. Again, yeah. that's just changing now as as more and more people are realizing that the arts in general are just um, a fantastic industry to work in. Um, you know, yeah. it's got its highs. You have your lows, obviously, like with any any profession. Yeah. But I think people are actually seeing the value of it um, now. Yeah, um, so yeah, if, when 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 we're younger, we're told to, you know you work hard, you can be a doctor, um, you work hard, yeah. you can be an accountant, you work hard, yeah. you can you get a nice office job, and blah blah blah. And for I think I, I won't I won't lie, I think for the majority of people, the absolute majority of people, um, it's not them. It's it's not it's not what no. they want to do. Um, no, it, they're always creative. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah, you just got to, whatever you feel like you have got to do. Go, just go and do it, and don't care what what anyone else says. That's my motivational quote for the day. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent, Harry. I'm going to leave you this last one. Okay, this last yeah. one. Yeah. Give us a pro tip. A pro tip. A pro tip. Um, a pro tip. Um, sound a writer, is a writer's probably... hack. Oh, a writer's hack. Um, read scripts. There you go. Read scripts. That's the only way you'll learn. <laughs> read loads of scripts and read loads of screenwriting books. And for filmmaking, sound is so important. <laughs> invest in good, in, invest in good sound. Don't make the same mistake that I've made. I mean, it wasn't that bad though, was yeah. it? I mean, you got the iPhone. So, Not in the end, so... no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not in the end. Yeah. But yeah. If, if I could go back, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> Harry, Harry Wells, thank you very much. It's been an absolute thank pleasure. You so much, I, I know I've enjoyed this, and um, I, you know, I, I was 26 once myself, you know, believe it or not. Yeah, go figure, yeah. Uh, and now, <laughs> such and such years old, and you know, nobody even when you get to my you look age, great. I, I feel old, <laughs> 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 but um, Harry, thank you very much. Um, Brighton Film Festival, 23rd of June. Yeah, that's it. This will be out the week leading up to it. Yeah, so the latest TV, Brighton. Yeah, and Brighton TV, um, yeah. But this 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 hour show will lead up to it, so people can watch it. Oh, right. Oh, you're talking about that. Before. Okay, yes, yeah, no, sorry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> But yeah. yes, and, and, and Clockwork will be out before then um, that week yeah. leading up to it as well. So it's a double whammy. So it's like, you know, a yeah. nice bit of promotional work um, so people can 
a find out a bit about you and then when they get to watch the film they'll they'll know and have a, a better affiliation to the man behind the the iphone <laughs> <laughs> perfect thank you harry, so much. thank you very much um thank you thank you it's been harry yeah. Walsh. i went the wrong way i did i did this yeah my friend mike taught me this and i oh. keep getting it wrong yeah i know right yeah, um, yeah so that's a He's been Harry Wells. They call me Stepney. This is behind the scenes, and we want to wish you a good night. Harry, say bye, everybody. Bye, everybody.